Hello guys, nice to see you. Last lecture we considered, <clears throat> uh, we used certain uh, equations from the system of Maxwell equations to calculate speed of uh, spreading of electromagnetic wave, showing that it is equal to speed of light. That is a, a clear evidence of the electromagnetic nature of light. So today we continue our discussion of electromagnetic waves, and in particular, we will uh, deal with the energy which is transferred by electromagnetic wave, and uh, also with linear momentum. Uh, so at the end of this lecture, we will have some time, we'll discuss um, some options of uh, common generation of electromagnetic waves, uh, and we'll shortly discuss the uh, spectrum, the broad spectrum of um, possible wavelengths of electromagnetic waves, uh, starting from some radio waves uh, and finishing with uh, gamma uh, rays, which are the shortest wavelengths electromagnetic uh, waves. Okay, so let us switch to the uh, lights where we can write. And as I mentioned uh, before, and also we discussed this um, during the uh, previous course, in, uh, first semester, uh, electromagnetic radiation is one of form of energy transfer. So if we heat up some body up to about 500 degrees Celsius or higher, we will see that it starts to glow with some reddish uh, light. Uh, so definitely uh, heat will be dissipating, the heat transfer will be carried out uh, by uh, convection, uh, but also if it located in, in air, but also it will be transferred by means of electromagnetic radiation. In this particular case, it is thermal radiation. Uh, <clears throat> so at some distance, if we put our uh, palm or some thermometer, there will be, uh, or some uh, infrared ray, like uh, infrared uh, wavelengths, electromagnetic wavelengths de detector, um, then we will see that there is some energy uh, transferred from this heated <coughs> uh, body uh, in space uh, by means of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, the rate of like instantaneous rate of transferring uh, of energy by <clears throat> an electromagnetic uh, wave is described by uh, so-called pointing vector. It's marked as S vector uh, and uh, is defined by the following equation. So it's one over mu naught times E naught vector. Oh, sorry, it's not just, just E vector, uh, product with magnetic field vector. So um, they're instantaneous. Uh, transfer of energy, rate of transfer of energy by an electromagnetic wave is described by this uh, pointing vector. So um, what exactly it tells us? The, the pointing vector is always uh, directed along the uh, spreading of the electromagnetic wave. So it shows uh, in which direction um, energy is transferred by this electromagnetic wave and its amplitude, like its absolute value, uh, gives us the, uh, actually the rate uh, 
of transferring uh, energy um, through a unit area, which is perpendicular to the direction of uh, spreading the electromagnetic wave. Uh, and, uh, uh, like, and this is instantaneous uh, energy, which is transferred through this unit area uh, perpendicular to the uh, direction of spreading electromagnetic wave. So these units would be what? Per uh, centimeter square or like usually just keep meter square. Uh, so it's, uh, since it's rate of energy transfer means that uh, it's measured in what? So it's kind of uh, power, uh, it's energy per unit time, per unit area, uh, oriented perpendicular to the direction of uh, propagation of electromagnetic wave. So let us uh, calculate uh, for some particular case of a plane electromagnetic wave, which we consider uh, during the previous uh, lecture, uh, <clears throat> which is so absolute value, assuming that of this pointing uh, vector would be uh, equal to E times B divided by mu no. That is true because for this uh, plane electromagnetic wave, uh, we have this condition, electric field vector is perpendicular to magnetic field vector and their uh, vector product, absolute value of their uh, vector product will be equal just to product of uh, absolute values of electric field vector and magnetic field vector. So uh, now if we recall the relationship between electric field and magnetic field in uh, an electromagnetic wave, uh, we can write the following. E is electric field. Uh, or actually better to express magnetic field vector. So let's write B is equal to uh, E divided by C. So there is certain relationship between um, electric field vector, uh, electric field and the magnetic field in the electromagnetic wave. And uh, with uh, the ratio of electric field to magnetic gives us always um, speed of light C, uh, <clears throat> or in other words, speed of uh, propagation of electromagnetic wave in uh, vacuum. So taking into account this relationship, we can write that this pointing vector is equal to E square divided by mu naught times C, or it is equal to C times B square divided by mu naught. So uh, this equation applies to any instant of time and uh, represents the instantaneous rate of uh, which energy is passing through the unit area perpendicular to the direction of um, propagation of the electromagnetic wave. However, it is instantaneous value and uh, more practical information is to know um, some average uh, of this pointing uh, vector, like of, of absolute value of pointing vector, over one or more cycles, uh, which is called wave intensity. So we usually operate uh, with, when we have some electromagnetic waves, we operate with wave intensity, intensity of light, um, and stuff like that. So uh, from practical point of view, we are interested in the average uh, value of uh, abs average absolute value of pointing vector 
are calculated for one or more cycles. So <clears throat> taking into account uh, previous, uh, previously uh, shown equations for uh, electric and magnetic fields, if we calculate average value for um, pointing vector, uh, there will be, um, the expression will involve cosine square a x minus omega t. And as was shown uh, earlier when we calculated some average of the, some effective uh, value of AC current, uh, average power delivered to a resistor um, in AC circuit uh, per one cycle or many cycles. Uh, that will result in, so average of such expression will result in coefficient one half. <clears throat> so uh, that's why we can write that intensity, which is average absolute value of pointing vector is equal to the uh, product of maximum electric field times maximum of magnetic field divided by two times mu naught. Uh, or in other forms, it can be written as uh, e maximum square divided by two mu naught times c, or it is equal to c times b maximum square divided by two mu naught. So these are uh, equations which are uh, will allow you to calculate uh, wave intensity, uh, means the uh, amount of uh, energy uh, transferred per unit time through a unit area perpendicular to the direction of propagation of electromagnetic wave. Uh, average for the uh, one cycle or, or more cycles. Uh, <clears throat> so now let us proceed further and we will discuss uh, the energy per unit volume, which is the uh, instantaneous energy density associated with uh, electric and magnetic fields of the electromagnetic wave. So we know from previous uh, lectures that this uh, energy density per unit volume for electric field is equal to one uh, half of epsilon zero times E square. And for the magnetic field equal to B square divided by two mu naught. So these are our equations for energy density per uh, unit uh, volume. Uh, and uh, if we substitute here uh, instantaneous values for electric and magnetic field, uh, we will get these instantaneous uh, values for electric field and magnetic field energy density per unit volume. Uh, <clears throat> so since electric and magnetic field uh, vary in electromagnetic wave, the same will happen with uh, this, uh, with both of these parameters. They will not be constant. They will change as the electric and magnetic field vectors will um, change in their magnitude. <clears throat> so uh, now let us show that um, both electric and magnetic field equally contribute to the uh, energy of electromagnetic wave. So for this uh, purpose, let us again assume that 
uh, like recall this relationship between electric and magnetic field uh, vector, uh, which is carried out via this uh, speed of light C constant, and this is equal to one over square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. This we derived during our previous lecture. <clears throat> so now let us write expression for the energy density per unit volume for the magnetic field. U B is equal to B square divided by two times mu naught. So this B square can be substituted with uh, E divided by C square. Let us do this. Mu naught and uh, Now, instead of uh, C, we need to consider its value. Here, uh, if we take this into account, we will get mu naught times epsilon naught divided by two mu naught, and here will be E squared. So mu naught and mu naught cancel out, and we get one over two epsilon naught e squared. So we have shown that the density of uh, energy associated with magnetic uh, field per unit volume uh, is equal to the same, uh, to, to the density of energy associated with the electric field ue. So both electric and magnetic field contribute equally to the total density of uh, energy in uh, uh, of electromagnetic wave per unit volume. And uh, uh, also, uh, and that should also be mentioned that it is true for some instantaneous energy um, density associated with uh, magnetic field of an electromagnetic wave is equal to that of the electric field. Uh, but total instantaneous energy is the sum of contribution of both because they are varying in time. So total energy density per unit volume would be um, UE plus UB, keep in mind that all uh, this UE and UB, they are changing in time, but total uh, energy density per unit volume will be a constant, and that will be defined as epsilon naught times E square, or in terms of magnetic field, B square divided by mu naught. So this is uh, <clears throat> a constant parameter, which is uh, defined by the uh, I mean constant parameter is it's instantaneous energy density which changes with time but uh, we can describe it without uh, involving electric field and magnetic field uh, we can just use either electric or magnetic field, because uh, we know that these contributions are equal. So instead of adding uh, magnetic, another term for magnetic field, we can just multiply uh, energy density of uh, electric field by uh, two, and that will give us this uh, equation. So the same is true for uh, <clears throat> magnetic field contribution. So again, this is instantaneous uh, energy density, which uh, is not so practical, and it is more 
useful to uh, calculate the average uh, energy density uh, during one cycle or many cycles, a right? uh, period of electromagnetic oscillation. So in this case, there will be uh, again uh, this factor of one half and this average energy uh, density per unit volume of electromagnetic wave will be epsilon zero times E square average and eventually we get one over two epsilon zero E maximum square and equal to B maximum square divided by two mu no. So keep in mind that here we have maximum values of electric and magnetic field, but uh, previously when we deal with instantaneous uh, parameters, we also used instantaneous uh, values of electric and magnetic field. So this is a key difference here. And uh, uh, if we want to get um, intensity of electromagnetic wave, um, watts per square meter, then as we have shown previously, it either uh, could be considered as average of the absolute value of pointing a vector as, or it can be expressed as the product of the speed of propagation of electromagnetic wave, uh, which is speed of light uh, in vacuum. It, because we, within this course, we uh, deal with electromagnetic waves in a free space uh, without taking into account uh, the electric or magnetic uh, contributions of some uh, medium. Uh, times this average uh, energy density per unit uh, time, U average. <clears throat> so for instance, uh, if we uh, give some examples, um, in the space just next to the uh, Earth, uh, intensity of uh, sunlight is about 1,370 watt per square meter. So this is so-called sun constant. It varies time to time uh, because of sun activity. Uh, however, it is considered as uh, sun constant. And uh, uh, this is, uh, we have some full spectrum. We will talk about this a bit later of sun uh, light, uh, if we integrate it for all valences, the total amount of uh, energy per unit time per square meter uh, delivered uh, to the area in space next to uh, Earth is this time, uh, sun constant. Uh, however, because of reflection and absorption of sunlight in atmosphere, <coughs> uh, this uh, the intensity of uh, sunlight which reaches the uh, surface of the Earth reduces, and uh, for so-called there are different conditions uh, because on equator, for instance, uh, sunlight uh, penetrate atmosphere. Uh, by like shorter distance. And uh, if we increase latitude, this distance increases. Uh, that's why for equator, there are some special conditions. I AM1, uh, it specifies that uh, sun, sun's, uh, sunlight is uh, characterized at the equator position, or if it's some uh, I believe 45 degrees uh, altitude, it's AM 1.5. Uh, that is considered as some standard uh, of sun 
light conditions and uh, solar simulators usually are uh, operated under these uh, requirements for AM 1.5. So then um, light, sunlight intensity at the surface, like perpendicular to the uh, rays of sunlight uh, will be about 1000 watt per square meter. Assuming, for instance, that we have performance of um, nowadays commercially available best solar cells uh, about 20%, uh, it's possible to extract up to 200 watts uh, power from one square meter of installed solar cells, uh, taking into account this uh, ideal conditions when there are no clouds and uh, some other uh, reasons to in order which which can reduce uh, intensity of sunlight at the surface of the earth. Okay, so next, what we are going to discuss is uh, momentum uh, and radiation pressure. So it should be mentioned that elect electromagnetic waves are transport besides energy, also uh, linear momentum. Uh, and uh, because of this fact, uh, if this light is, is absorbed or reflected, um, it will exert some pressure on the surface. This is uh, quite small pressure, but sometimes it uh, really matters and should be taken into account uh, or could be the main driving force for certain processes, which uh, we will mention a bit later. So let us assume that uh, we have some electromagnetic wave which strikes on a surface at normal incidence, like so the surface is perpendicular to the projection direction of the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave. Uh, and uh, it transport total energy, E, E, R, marked, uh, <clears throat> Uh, per interval of time, uh, delta T. Uh, let us assume that we deal with some black body, so 100% uh, absorption of this electromagnetic wave. Then the total momentum, linear momentum transferred by the, to the surface, uh, this black body uh, should be expressed as follows. So we have, we deal now with absolute values. So this P um, linear momentum will be the total energy transferred uh, to the surface by electromagnetic, electromagnetic wave divided by um, speed of propagation of this electromagnetic wave. So in this case, it's speed of light. So the uh, pressure, uh, capital P, uh, according to the, is defined as a uh, force per unit area. So we have some force divided by area. And according to the second uh, Newton's law, we can express it as follows. It will be one over A area. Uh, and here is the derivative of the change of the angular, uh, sorry, the linear um, momentum over time. So it will be dP over dT. <clears throat> so, This, we already know expression for uh, linear uh, momentum. Then we can substitute its uh, value, it will be d over dt. 
e e r divided by c and this is 1 over c d e e r d e e r over d t divided by a so this uh, term here is uh, the rate at which the energy is like, arriving at the surface of the black body uh, per unit uh, area of this surface, uh, which in its turn is the magnitude like, of the uh, pointing uh, vector, this is instant tenuous uh, rate of uh, energy delivered per unit area as we defined it earlier and that's why the pressure of electromagnetic wave on um, black body uh, like unit area of black uh, body which absorbs everything will be uh, absolute value of pointing uh, vector, which stands for this term divided by speed of light. So if, for instance, we have uh, absolutely reflecting surface, close approximation is mirror, because it's not absolutely reflecting, but close enough, uh, for our comparison, then we will have uh, twice larger momentum delivered to the surface and, of course, twice larger uh, pressure of electromagnetic wave uh, because uh, this electromagnetic wave will uh, change its, so instead of being absorbed like with black body, it will change it, its uh, direction to the opposite, that's why we should multiply both uh, linear momentum delivered to the surface uh, by two, the T E R divided by C, and uh, the pressure will be two times S, absolute value of pointing vector divided by C. So this is, uh, <clears throat> The, uh, these are the expressions for uh, linear momentum transferred by electromagnetic wave uh, delivered to the surface, either uh, absolutely absorbing or absolutely reflecting, and also the corresponding uh, pressure which this electromagnetic uh, wave will exert on the unit area of such surfaces. So usually, let's see, when we operate with uh, sunlight uh, exerted on, on the surface close to the uh, Earth's location, uh, it is something like 5, 10 to minus 6 Newton per square meter. So it's very low. Uh, pressure, uh, and uh, usually we don't um, need to deal with this because it's much weaker uh, than any other pressure which we experience in our everyday life. However, under certain conditions that is uh, relevant, for instance, in 1973, because of some mistake in the launch of a satellite, uh, <clears throat> Mariner 10, which is supposed to investigate uh, Mercury uh, planet, the first planet next closest to the sun. Uh, it was figured out that the trajectory of this satellite is supposed to be uh, wrong because of this mistake with launching. And in order to save the mission, uh, these solar panels of the satellite were used as solar sails 
in order to correct the trajectory while it was approaching the uh, planet. Uh, since it quite close to the sun, the pressure of sunlight was uh, much higher there, and it was enough to correct this small deviation, unexpected deviation from the trajectory. Uh, <clears throat> however, nowadays there are programs for uh, so-called uh, solar sailing uh, of miniature or like so-called micro satellites. Um, the idea is to use pressure of uh, light generated by powerful lasers uh, on Earth uh, when some very small satellites, like very light, up less than one kilogram, are uh, attached to a large reflecting, uh, large area reflecting foil, serve as a light uh, sail. Uh, because of this pressure of electromagnetic wave, they could accelerate quite uh, fast for during long time and reach uh, in series speeds, like compared to half of speed of light. Uh, and that is uh, quite seriously considered opportunity to send a mission to the outer uh, solar system space. Uh, technically saying, uh, send these satellites to uh, the closest uh, stars uh, to our solar system. So quite ambitious, and we'll see how it proceeds in future. Uh, <clears throat> but in that case, light pressure is the main driving force uh, of the process. Okay, so now let us talk a bit about production of like generation of uh, electromagnetic waves. Uh, <clears throat> usually the most common uh, instrument for that is so-called dipole antenna. Let me like, share my screen with the slides. Okay. So dipole antenna consists of two conducting rods of equal uh, lengths uh, connected to some AC voltage source. Uh, when we apply some, so this AC voltage source, it could be some uh, LC uh, oscillator, like inductor capacitor oscillator. Uh, <clears throat> And when we apply some varying in time uh, polarity of voltage and in magnitude and also in polarity, uh, it forces electric charges to uh, move along these uh, conducting rods. So with some certain acceleration, uh, this this is the only one opportunity to generate electromagnetic waves. So stationary charges, they generate just electric field, uh, but we need uh, varying in time electric field in order to generate also uh, varying in time magnetic field and vice versa. So in this case, in order to, to generate electromagnetic waves, we need to force our charges to move with certain acceleration which is realized in uh, such dipole antenna. And uh, uh, when we have like maximum uh, voltages, when we reach maximum voltages uh, applied uh, to these rods provided by the oscillator, AC voltage supplier, uh, we have some electric dipole, uh, have some charges, uh, positive or negative uh, charges uh, accumulated in this, um, rods, conducting rods, and they create, uh, obviously, as we know, electric dipole creates electric uh, field. Uh, once we change the applied voltage, uh, this polarization uh, starts to uh, change, uh, and there is some 
current flowing through this uh, uh, oscillator and two conducting rods. So this current creates, which is also varying in time, uh, this current creates magnetic field as shown here. And uh, <clears throat> then we have two main ingredients. Uh, we have time varying electric field, time varying magnetic field uh, to create, like generate electromagnetic uh, wave. However, it should be mentioned that in uh, uh, this electric and magnetic field close to antenna, uh, this dipole antenna, they are 90 degrees out of phase because we have uh, current flowing only when we uh, increase of current when we reduce uh, the charges. So when we reduce the polarization, so they are 90 degrees out of phase. And uh, you may consider that the net uh, uh, energy, which is going to be transferred by uh, electromagnetic wave is equal to zero. Uh, however, uh, it should be taken into account that this electric field created by the dipole reduces proportional to one, uh, like one over uh, distance in Q power, like in third power. And uh, uh, that's why uh, further from the antenna, uh, there will be only electric field created by the time varying uh, magnetic field. And this field, as, uh, this electric field will be in phase with the magnetic field. And uh, that is actually the electromagnetic way which will be spread in um, different directions. And uh, here on the left side of the image, we have the distribution of uh, intensity of electromagnetic wave. Um, generated by dipole antenna. So we have uh, some uh, very clear uh, orientation of the generated electromagnetic waves. Uh, so maximum goes uh, along axis X perpendicular to the dipole antenna and minimum, uh, which actually nothing is uh, irradiated in the direction along dipole antenna. So that is a result of this complex interaction between the uh, time varying magnetic uh, field uh, and uh, time varying uh, electric field generated by the uh, magnetic field. Uh, so there is certain space uh, dependence and uh, this is the result of some complicated solution of uh, Maxwell equations specifically for this um, dipole antenna, uh, which goes beyond the scope of our course, but uh, it's necessary just to know that uh, dipole antenna does not uh, irradiate uniformly electromagnetic waves in the space um, around it, and it possesses some very clear uh, the uh, intensity of electro generated electromagnetic waves. They possess very clear spatial um, dependence. So uh, the next, what we would like to uh, consider is the spectrum of uh, electromagnetic waves, which is quite broad. Uh, <clears throat> so the wavelengths or uh, it's actually convenient to characterize uh, electromagnetic waves by their wavelengths. Uh, it could be also frequency uh, range or uh, depends on the field, but quite often it is characterized by uh, the wavelengths. Uh, so uh, let's start from the long wavelengths and we can see that there is a range of uh, kilometers uh, for the wavelengths. Uh, those are called radio waves. They can uh, be spread for very long distances going uh, around different obstacles. Um, some radio, long radio waves can be also reflected 
from the ionized uh, top layers of atmosphere, ionosphere, and uh, that's the mechanism how it's possible to realize uh, radio wave uh, connection uh, between uh, two points which are uh, on the opposite sides of the planet. That is only because of this uh, reflection of long radio waves uh, from the ionosphere. <clears throat> so this is how this amateur uh, radio uh, fans are still using uh, long wavelengths electromagnetic uh, radiation in order to uh, establish some communication between uh, different continents. So then we go for shorter wavelengths, let's say something. Uh, of course, the boundaries are not clearly defined. They overlap quite uh, a lot with each other, but somewhere in this range of from one meter to one millimeter, um, we deal with microwaves, which, uh, for instance, we deal with them in uh, our microwave heaters. Uh, also, our cell phones, they operate in this wavelength uh, region. So, in terms of information uh, transporting, uh, they have higher capabilities. However, their uh, distance to which they can be spread, they are more limited by uh, curvature of uh, Earth's surface and also by different obstacles. Uh, also, if we go to higher um, frequencies and shorter wavelengths, uh, we have this infrared region uh, where uh, heat usually is transferred for uh, low temperatures, let's say from uh, in the range of room or maybe up to a few hundred degrees of Celsius, we still don't see if there is some object which is uh, 300 degrees Celsius hot, uh, we don't see with bare eye its thermal radiation. However, it emits quite intensively in the infrared uh, spectrum, uh, but uh, we just, our eye is designed in that way that it can detect very narrow spectral range of um, valences, something between 740, and uh, uh, 400 nanometers. So here it's showing that visible ranges from 700 uh, nanometers, but usually it should be a bit, a bit larger. Uh, so this is quite narrow spectral range, uh, but this is where our uh, eye is sensitive and can uh, detect electromagnetic waves. So. Uh, then uh, higher energies uh, of uh, photons or higher frequencies and shorter wavelengths comes for ultraviolet. We have some ultraviolet uh, radiation which comes to us from the sun. It's not so much in the sun spectrum, uh, solar spectrum, but uh, and moreover, a lot of it is absorbed in the atmosphere, so it cannot spread to very large distances because of uh, high uh, absorption uh, capabilities of ultraviolet electromagnetic waves uh, by different materials, including uh, also our atmosphere and some vapor, water vapor present in our atmosphere. Uh, <clears throat> so that is quite high energetic uh, electromagnetic radiation. And uh, of course, there are X and gamma uh, rays, uh, which are even way more energetic. Uh, and uh, usually they are uh, present either in the space around Earth, uh, outside the atmosphere, uh, or in some special medical 
or characterization instruments, taking into account the uh, high energy of these uh, X and gamma rays, they can penetrate through dense uh, materials and reveal their uh, crystalline structure or maybe just uh, some for medical application, like our bones and uh, other tissues, it depends on their densities. <clears throat> uh, what is, so we are run, running out of time almost. So I would like to share with you again with one more slide. So that is related to my uh, research interests. And, and during last few years, in collaboration with different research groups. Uh, I had a chance to work on a range of different semiconductor devices, which uh, detect, like co convert uh, electromagnetic waves uh, of different spectrum uh, into some DC electrical useful signal. Uh, so that could be a range of different devices starting from some uh, gamma and X-ray detectors based on graphene and cadmium telluride uh, semiconductor, some uh, organic or perovskite solar cells and uh, photo detectors, which are working in the ultraviolet visible and close near infrared spectrum, uh, some uh, thermoelectric devices, which convert heat into electricity and that obviously operates in the range of infrared uh, spectrum and so-called uh, ionic uh, electronic ratchets, uh, which uh, with the help of some dipole antenna can collect some random uh, noise, electromagnetic uh, radio uh, waves or microwaves from environment uh, and convert this electromagnetic uh, noise uh, into uh, DC current, which can uh, power some low uh, power uh, remote uh, electronic devices. And they depend on the uh, channel lens and the uh, antenna, which is used for the absorbing electromagnetic signals uh, can be used also in a quite long uh, spectrum range, uh, which covers micro and radio waves. So uh, <clears throat> that is uh, the last slide I would like to share with you guys. Thank you very much for attention. If you have any questions, you are welcome. Yeah, if not, then uh, have a good weekend. Take care and uh, we will see each other on uh, Monday. There we will start, I believe, a new topic or that will be optics uh, and uh, we'll continue working on optics until the end of the semester. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, I believe it 10th of uh, April, I need to double check there will be a third midterm. So start preparing for that. Uh, <clears throat> it will cover four uh, chapters. Uh, I guess chapter 16, 15, 14, and 13. Uh, but double check everything in the uh, manual for the course. Okay, thank you very much for attention. Take care and bye-bye.